another interview, another fun time with one of my my good friends. That's what this page is about: sitting down, chatting with friends. And this guy has uh, has turned into a, a a very big friend of mine the last couple of years. Um, I instantly became a fan of his, as I have told him many times. And uh, yeah, this is Marco Stunt. And we're looking up. We're, we're doing small talks with Marco Stunt. Small Hello. talks. Love it. Small talks. Hello. I fit perfectly in that, I feel like. I, so I had, I had Jeremy Smith, the guy that beat the hell out of me on Rough and Rowdy. Uh-huh. I had him on, and now you. So I feel like I didn't want this to be... We use the M word. I didn't want this to be a midget thing, but <laughs> it's very much so a midget thing. I feel like I need Brad Williams on here. Oh, I really? feel like I want Peter Dinklage on here just so I can say, fuck you, Peter Dinklage. Uh, I, 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 it wasn't going to be a little person thing, but it's two for two already. <laughs> I'm glad I can be a part of it. Yeah. Marco, uh, give me, give me some history. You're, you, I, I, I've, learned about you through through various things yeah traveling you you never stayed in one place it sounds like your family never stayed in one place give me the the growing up give me the family stuff tell me about you tell the people about you okay so i was born in arkansas paragold arkansas actually uh and then we weren't there too long before we moved to mississippi Uh, i'm not exactly sure what town either Old branch or south haven or miss or uh by helia somewhere out like that but uh lived here for a while then we moved to oxford um which is like an hour south of here um and i was around three or close. my brother was born there and then uh then we moved back here to all branch area and then we moved to my dad was a pastor, so we moved to um, Indiana for, uh, I don't know how long, maybe a couple of years. But uh, we were in Fort Wayne, Indiana for a couple of years, and then we moved back to here for a couple of years before we, he ended up becoming a missionary. And then we, okay. ended up moving, we ended up moving to Costa Rica in Central America, and that was cool. Um, we were there for a year learning the language and well, I was just going to school and learning the language. They were actually going to school to learn the language. Um, and then um, luckily the schools though were like right next to each other. So it's like an American run school. So it had all the same schedules as like an American school would and like the curriculums and everything. So nothing really changed for me except for like the language. Um, so like well, there was that. I didn't know that's I I knew none of this. So really? you guys, it was Fort Wayne, and then you went back to Olive Branch, and then just up to Costa Rica, up yeah. up and left down to yeah. Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. That's knowing your family that blows my mind. Like I <laughs> I feel like I've gotten to know your family in a very short time very well, yeah. and that blows my mind. Like I don't I don't see Costa Rica being a place where your family would be like hey let's do it but it was that's that's incredible that it's just up and left yeah we were we were there for a year and then our main destination was nicaragua that's where we lived for two years so uh we were on the we lived in central america for three years and then uh we moved back in 2010 early 2000 summer around the summer of 2010 Okay. And then told me we wouldn't be going back because um, uh, some stuff happened that I won't get into right now. That's yep. fine. But uh, some stuff happened where we had to move back. And then uh, I ended up graduating here from Lewisburg High School here in Olive Branch. In Olive uh, Branch, yep. And then awesome. That's about okay, it. so you're doing all that moving. So did you... When, when, what year did you move back? You said to Olive Branch, 2010, 2010, just to graduate. Uh, no, to, to, I went, I came back in. That was, that would have been my eighth grade year. So I started. Okay. 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 So you were, you were back for a bit before graduation driving and all that stuff. Okay. Awesome. 
And then, so 2010, and then you started training when? 2014, uh, when I was, I believe I was 17 when we started training. And then... In, uh, in Olive Branch? Yes, yes, yes. So the way that happened, um, I can give that story. That's a fun one. Um, we were... All, so I have a group of friends that I'm still friends with. Uh, I have my buddy, Daniel, who moved away after he graduated back to Texas, where he's from. And then I have my buddy named Clayton, who also who goes by Walker Hayes um, around here. He, he, he still wrestles. Daniel uh, doesn't. He's getting back into it. He's training with me now. Every time he comes up once a month to come to the Cape shows, which is wild. I don't I, I couldn't imagine driving nine hours every month just to go but props to him for doing that uh all three of us started together though like we we uh we found this um flyer for a show that was like 10 15 minutes away which blew our minds because the only wrestling we really knew about was like your your wbs and your tnas and your ring of honors like we didn't know anything else really existed beyond that um nothing that we could like go see yeah. frequent you meant uh but uh we went to this show and dude, we had a blast i mean we were yelling at everybody we were those fans that were probably made it more enjoyable for the wrestlers because we were just yep. going back and forth with them the whole time but after the show we talked um i convinced them i was like yo we should talk to them about training we should see if we can if they'll train us did you know that they were, were training or no I had no clue. I had no okay. clue, but I wanted to ask them. Yep. And we did. We did. They gave us a, a set price. It was like, I think it was $75 for the first session and then 25 after that every session. And uh, which now that I look back on it, I'm, I'm glad I started when I did. I'm glad I got into the business, but damn, it was a... Uh, if I could have picked somebody else to start training me, I would have. Um, they uh, they weren't like best people in the world. <laughs> the guy that was actually training me wasn't like the best person in the world. He wasn't yeah. my favorite. He didn't really, we didn't get along. And he just thought I wasn't listening to him. But I don't know. There's just miscommunication. But I ended up. You didn't. Uh, so that, at that point. So when I started, backyard wrestling was the thing. Everyone my age started with backyard wrestling and then got indie trained. Yeah, we definitely did that. Oh, that was still a thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that, okay. So did you have like any knowledge of what you were doing before you got in the rings the first time? I thought I did. Okay. I, thought. <laughs> I uh, because I remember when I was in high school. So, okay. At like 14, not long after we moved back, we moved back in 2010. I, I think I was 14 when we moved back and we went to this show at the fair and I, I was blown away. I was like, oh, my God, wrestling at the fair. And they were that come to find out the wrestling show didn't know this was happening. But the fair was charging like five dollars a person to be able to get in the ring and run around the ring for a minute. OK. And uh, me and my brother did that. And we thought we were the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. I was jumping off the top rope and they were like, Hey, don't do that. I was like, Oh, it's okay. I'm fine. I did it again. They made us get out, but we watched the show. And, um, at the end they were letting a whole bunch of people get in there, like younger, younger kids. And well, they're about my size anyway. So I got in there with them and, uh, this referee who, you know, at that age or at that time, when you don't know anything about wrestling, you think everybody knows everything about wrestling if they're in wrestling. So I t this ref was like teaching us how to lock up and boy, was it not correct. And did I, I know it, but I was right arm locking. I was Lucha locking up, doing a Lucha lock up. Yep. Right. And then um, I tried to teach that to my friends in high school being like, yo, I was trained. Don't worry. <laughs> we, were, we, were, uh, we were out on a tarp on the ground out of my grandparents' house. Sometimes yeah. we'd use a trampoline, but it was too soft and bouncy, we thought. So we would be throwing each other around on the ground and we would slam each other through, excuse me, like tiles and stuff. And uh, 
which that breaks way too easily to be bumping through. Um, yeah. We, yeah, I, we always upgraded from bed sheets to sleeping bags to mattresses. And then we found a random like wooden ring up in another, the, the a city about 20 minutes North. So we always upgraded every time. But man, every time we upgraded the littlest bit, it felt like, man, we're we're gaining steam here. We got this. Yeah, we can do so many new different things on bed mattresses. <laughs> That's what we had a, like a like a mattress. We had like we had a pad at my friend at my buddy Clayton's house. We would go over to his house and uh, we'd go outside, and there'd be this like mattress stacked on top of like this other stuff. We jump off trees into it and stuff. Awesome. Um, the worst time i think the worst idea i think i ever had with trying to be a backyard wrestler was i wanted to make my trampoline more firm so i found a bunch of like wood all around the 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 farm area the barn and then so i hammered it all together and i put it i put this long like two by four with like a I'd seen the spring in the middle of a oh, no. trampoline before, but all I had was a two by four. So I put the two by four standing up and then like another two by four going this way. And then one going that way. And I thought it'll be fine. Cause I found some carpet padding on the side of the road and, and uh, I put the carpet padding down and I would go to bump on it and it stabbed me in the back. Because um, it's not a spring. It's a two by four. Yeah. <laughs> that that do it all for me right there <laughs> okay so you you're getting trained locally uh immediately on shows um, it, was there a lot of shows in the area how did that kind of transition how did how did you the the cutting the teeth as they say so i uh I honestly didn't train long enough, to be honest. I was training like twice a month for like four or five months. I, I always I always say me and when I first trained, I mean, it was before shows. It yeah. was two hours before the show that month. And that yep. was it. That was literally my training for six months. And then I was just booked. I was like, yep. okay, all right, that, that works. I, uh, while training, I actually transitioned into working with this guy named who I give all my credit to now because I train more with him than this other guy. Mm-hmm. Um, his name is Motley Cruz or David. He used to go by David Price, which is also his real name. If Have you ever seen the Jumpin' Jeff Farmer promo yes. where he's like, Motley Cruz? Yes. He's, yes. He's, yes. That's the Cruz that trained me. Okay. So, uh, so there's that. That's that was fun. He was great. He was tough and like wanted you to do good and was very firm in what he was teaching. And I love that. I think that's I, that's exactly what I needed. He taught me the exact way I needed. And uh, he was very he we were very close. Mm-hmm. Like point, We were very close. Like yeah. and not to say that like there's any mal like thoughts now there's not at all we just haven't talked in a while but we were very close he uh ended up finding me a match in january at the middle of january of 2015 is when i debuted and i debuted in the middle of mississippi in a barn so that that right there aged me more than anything you've ever said to me because i'm thinking 2015 January of 2015, I was like my last stint with WWE. And I didn't realize that. For some reason, I looked and I was like, oh, he's like maybe four years younger than me, four or five. I didn't know you're 10 years younger than me. (laughs) Yeah. That in itself aged me. But what you just said now that you debuted a year, I had a year left. And then I was released by WWE and on the indies. So that's okay. All right. Yeah. Aged me big time right there. Uh, <laughs> and so three- then it's, and then is it off to the races or is it uh, sporadic? Very, very few and far between. I wrestled in Mississippi. Well, I, okay. So I wrestled for this one company. Cause they told me 
not to go anywhere else mm-hmm. for they actually this one it's okay it's okay you'll go downstairs if you want to go 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 downstairs every so, so jeremy uh, had, jeremy smith jeremy smith had this enormous dog i hate i i don't hate dogs i am i'm afraid and now you have big dogs i don't i can't do it i cannot do it like <laughs> Seeing that, like, no, that gives me the willies. Like, whoo, oh yeah, yep. They could be the sweet, and and they are the sweetest things. They are, man. Locking eyes, because just as a kid, I would lock eyes with dogs, and they would always jump on me and knock me over. And I hate, man, big dogs. I lock eyes with them, and it just sends just chills up my up my arms. It's the craziest thing ever. So when I see your dogs now, they're the sweetest thing ever. But man, oh no! <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> it's the best. Man. <laughs> yeah, he had I did that. I did that first interview, and Jeremy's sitting on his couch, and this just monster of a dog just comes into frame, and I go, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, I I have two huskies. They're the sweetest things ever. Maybe you don't have to meet them one day. But maybe. I'll meet them. I'll meet them from like the car. That'll be okay. that'll be perfect for, 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 for at first. That'll that'll work. So I started working around after that around that same company, and then we had a blowout, like uh, falling out. I mean, not a blowout. Um, and uh, I was I stopped for like six to eight months, and uh, all of it. Yeah. Complete. I didn't know where else to go. I didn't have like really any other connections. Um, and Motley wasn't doing a bunch of wrestling at the time. I would go travel with him to little spot shows. Actually, one show he wrestled Tracy Smothers and I got to ref that match. And it was really cool to me. Um, but uh, other than that, I didn't really do much for about six, six to eight months. And, the, and then I finally got a call um, saying, hey, come up to tennessee west tennessee which it was like two hours away from me and i was like wow that's a long way to go um uh now that now I'm, thinking back on it it's nothing yeah i can do that i do that regularly now yeah but, uh i go up there and i i'm there for probably a year until i start rise I, I i wrestle in mississippi and there every now and then now and uh i meet these guys who are like hey why don't you start traveling going to other places I was like, I didn't know I could do that. So I, uh, I hop in a car with these guys. I start going to Mississippi, uh, Missouri and uh, not Missouri, uh, Illinois and Indiana, which super cool. Um, and then I guess about three, three years, two and a half, three years in, I do, I start working for this place called Southern Underground Pro in Nashville. Okay. Uh, which is they still I think they, they still run but they had shut down for COVID and also their building got destroyed by tornado so that was something um I was working for them and I did this tournament for a company in Georgia called Action Wrestling okay um, and and uh it was this turn is this showcase tournament uh for like newer guys and I was in that and I ended up winning that um but the next i guess two weeks after that i was supposed to be going to gcw in in new york for the first time ever so let me pause you there uh how did you get seen by gcw so i had done like iwa um their iwtv live streams a couple times and and southern underground pro had also done a bunch of IWTV live streams and Brett is just real good with keeping up with independent wrestling. Yep. And he said he had had his eye on me for a few months, which was absolutely blew my mind because I don't know. I didn't understand how anybody knew who I was. Did you do something nuts for him to see? Like, you know what I mean? Like nowadays the, the GIF or the, the memes get out there and they, that's what gets people hooked and what, what, Hey, I got to check out because of this, this clip, now people go back and look at, hey, what is this kid all about? Was it a certain think, thing or just a bunch? I think it was just my more my size than anything. Okay. That's 
most people were intrigued by when I would go to a show is my size and uh, which I get. Um, but I don't really know. You know, I never really asked him what it was, but we got up there and I can tell you the move that got real popular up there was uh, the satellite code breaker thing I did. Um, yep. It got like over a million views total all around. Was that the and, KTB one? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the first thing I see of you. Yeah, that's what a lot of people, that's most people's first memory of me is that. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of set everything off. Uh-huh, it is. It just, it just blew up the name of Marco Stunt and really got eyes on you big time. Um, so that's kind of where I was going was, was is it, you're working, uh, that you said Southern, Southern Underground? Yeah. So underground. you're doing that and then you go to GCW from there? Mm-hmm. And start doing those? Yeah uh basically yeah um so yeah i did that gcw show and then um i had like 800 followers and then by the time the night was over i think i had 2500 followers isn't that crazy that that like just the one night can just flip the switch like that like nothing yeah it's nuts i didn't understand it at all oh i also that's when uh i got a text message from Cody Rhodes that night um, and got invited to all in for the battle Royal, which was that was my next thing. That was, I literally have bullet points of, all right, here we go. So you do GCW and was it spring break or was it what, what is lost in New York? Okay. New York. Which isn't that, isn't that crazy that, I mean, Cody Rhodes, who is running all out, you know, one, yeah. of the, one of the main guys running all out. Again, we talk about having your, your finger on the pulse. Like, like you said, Brett does. And, and that Cody's watching that to see what the hot acts are as well for mm-hmm. a worldwide phenomenon of a pay-per-view coming up. Yeah, that's okay. So you get that text, take it that, away. I get that text. Uh, he's like, Hey, would you be, would you be down to come? Uh, are you available to come and work this show? I'm like, no, I'm not at all. <laughs> I'm like, of course I'm, I'm available. I was like, I don't, I'll do it for free. He's like, all right. And then he's like, Hey, is this price enough? And I'm like, huh? You, you added a zero on accident. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. I, that's the first time I had ever gotten three digit pay. You know, I got a, I got a three digit pay. And uh, it was a high three digit. It wasn't a low three digit either. And I was like, whoo, <laughs> up my pay a little bit now. <laughs> uh, but uh, I th- I'm trying to remember which one I did first. So it was back to back. Everything was two weeks apart from each other. So I did GCW, I did All In, and I did PWG Bola all within six weeks. So that's what that was kind of a crazy thing. Um... Before we get too far in there is when we wrestle. Yeah. Before, Where did we- before right. all, before all the all in or all out, right? Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. So, because I'm seeing Black Label, Mikey Blanton from Black Label says we're going to wrestle. I, I have something for you, Marco Stunt. We're buddies now, so I can say this. I literally go, I haven't heard that name. Okay. And now I YouTube Marco Stunt, and I see what the fuck you do, and I literally message him back, and no, can't do it, but I can't. can't." He goes, why? What's going on? He goes, you'll be fine. I said, I can't. I said, there's no way I'm keeping up with this guy. It's There's no chance. There's absolutely no way. He is a different breed of midget wrestler and don't take that the wrong way. Cause I know you won't, but you are a, you're a, 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 a way above and beyond anything I could ever do than that. And that, especially now. And now it's like, you want me to wrestle him 
well, I don't know how I'm going to keep up in that. So I was so nervous going into it, like messaging Ethan Page and John Thorne and being like, guys, I don't know what I'm going to do. This this might be the swan song for old Dylan Postle here. I don't, this is it. This is it. This is where I get exposed as being a nipple twist and ass bite wrestler. And that's it. And up until literally I met you, I was like, this is, no, I, I cannot. And then, so that was definitely before All In. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't think, yes, it was before All In. Because then after we wrestled, I started keeping up with you a bit more. And it was like, like you said, it was in a matter of uh, a month or two. It's this and this. And then I see you on Bola and it's like, wow, this is incredible. He's really taking off. And it was awesome. So how long between that and then you get the follow-up call? Um, so like for AEW? Yeah. How does all in go? How does it, how does it, how does that day go? How, do, how give me the experience. So, huh. cause again, small town, Mississippi kid. Yeah. So probably hasn't been on many flights in his life besides for traveling as a kid. I remember, yeah, I did it for going to Central America, but that's about it. Um, yeah. And now you're flying to the biggest non WWE show in history. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I remember uh, it's still very surreal, I guess, now to think about it. Um, but I remember getting there. I was, because uh, we had StarCast as well, the first StarCast. Yep. Uh, I I was actually booked for that before I was booked for All In because GCW was running, right? No, not necessarily. No? Um, it was actually kind of a joke. It was it was it was all f- like a game. I would I wasn't originally going to be there, but I had this match against Max uh, MJF, and I beat him. And they were doing the whole thing where if he or. Uh, Something about all in. Like if he loses, he he doesn't get all in, or if he wins, he gets all in. Something like that with Flip Gordon, I think it was. And so, oh okay, before, okay. yeah, before that match, I did. Uh, before the Flip Gordon match, I beat him at Glory Pro Wrestling in St. Louis, and uh, they, they somebody posted on Twitter, "Hey, Starcast, Marco Stunt beat MJF. Doesn't he deserve to be?" at Starcast now. And so uh luckily I had a tiny bit of like momentum at that point and they booked me for it. Um uh so I go out there and I do Starcast and then the next day is show day. And uh I remember showing up to the or no no no, no I'm sorry. I'm gonna keep it Starcast for a second. At Starcast I meet everybody. I meet the young bucks for the first time. And they knew me by name, which was the craziest thing ever. I met Cody there for the first time, and he came up and gave me a hug. And it, I met a whole bunch of people that day. Um, I uh, Thunder, uh, Thunder Rosa. Rosa Mendez was right next to me at, at StarCast. She was my table neighbor. And so we, we chatted the whole day, I guess, for like six hours, it feels, five to six hours. Um, I thought it was the coolest thing ever, but we get to the show the next day and I walk, I'm, I'm walking down. Have you been in the Sears center before? No, no. Okay. So there, well, you've been in many arenas. So you know how like a lot of times there's like a huge, like hill driveway, like go down to the truck area. Yep. Well, that's where, that's what we're walking down. And like, this is all surreal. I'm, I'm seeing fans like, tailgating and like they've got the the all-in party tent going on and i walk into the arena and i see behind the scenes everybody's walking around i'm seeing like uh cody and and uh they got like like banditos there and and i'm trying to doubt diamond dallas page was there a bunch of the nwa guys were there because the the title match but um we start talking about the match. Um, we're putting it together. Tommy Dreamer and Bully Ray are both in it. <clears throat> and uh, to this day, I give them credit for 
me doing anything in that battle royal. Because originally I was going to do my move, like the satellite code breaker deal. Um, that was already planned because that was the one that they booked me off of. But I got the first elimination. I got to go face to face with Bully and all that. And yeah. and I still did that move and everything. And I got to shine in that battle royal. Yeah. And because they were pushing so hard for me, they were like, oh, I think Marco would be good for this part. I think, just think of how it would go out with the crowd and everything. And it really meant a lot to me. And that was, that's still probably the best wrestling day I've ever had. One of, it's in my top three, um, just because of how crazy surreal it was. And like, it was, it was my first time doing stuff like that. But um at that point, you would have never done extra work or been at WWE shows or anything like that. No. It was literally, this was your first time even smelling anything other than independent wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. I remember actually getting in the ring and being like, wow, this ring is huge. <laughs> <laughs> And I was sitting there trying to teach myself how to actually run the ropes in it because I, it was so much like I, I have to literally take a step or two more, probably two more steps in that ring just yeah. to run across it. Like I'm taking five steps in that ring when you should when normally you're supposed to take two or three. Um, That's crazy. You do all in. You kill it all in. Tommy Dreamer and Bully Ray, like you said, go to bat for you as. Which is the coolest thing ever like that's that's something that again they don't have to do but I, uh, but we keep mentioning the finger on the pulse and those two guys too they know they follow social media and they know what's hot and so if they can be involved in it they're going to take the opportunity to which is the smartest thing to do in wrestling mm-hmm. that it's it's so how then what's after all in where, where do you, where just back, is it GCW stuff, making your name even more there? I, uh, yeah, I did a, I actually didn't have much longer, um, turns out. Um, I, uh, so I did all that. Everything was going great. I get out to LA to do a show with GCW and I break my leg in half. I remember hearing about, yes. Okay. Yep. 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 That was October of 2018. October? Yeah, I think October of 2018. So let's get into that. What happened? I was wrestling a guy, and we were discussing a move to do. Um, and I didn't really want to do it. Yep. I it down a few times. And I've never told this story in public, so this is the first time. Uh, and the way I feel about it. So I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do the move. I told him three times like hey i don't want to do this move and then um he somehow he convinced me it's not gonna be that bad let's just do the move <clears throat> um well we set up the move and i don't know if you've ever been like have you ever been like seriously injured like broken anything or no knock okay. on wood i have uh concussed three three or four times in a match but never hurt hurt so um i don't know so like there's this like weird feeling i got and i had it the whole day i was like man i just feel like you feel like something's gonna go wrong right yeah okay before we even did them like talked about the match or anything like i hadn't even seen the guy yet i was like man uh, something feels off today well we get into the match we do this move and uh I knew it. I smacked my leg across the, we did a Canadian destroyer, but the table, the door was set up long ways onto a thing, a a thing of steps, like some wooden steps. Well, we jumped a little too far and went back too far. And my leg completely, my left leg completely wrapped around the step. It like broke immediately and uh, clean in half too. And uh, I remember laying there, like, going over the rest of what we had to do. I was like, all right, what am I going to be able to do? What am I going to be able to do? Because I knew, like, I couldn't done my springboard thing anymore, I don't think. I didn't think I could stand up and walk. So I, w- I went to lean over, 
to like, cause I was holding my leg in the air like this. And, uh, I went to lean over. And when I leaned over, um, you know how skateboarder, have you ever seen skateboard breaks, like leg breaks and their leg will just flop over the Sid, what, like Sid, like yes. what happened with Sid? Yeah, exactly. That's what happened to me. I rolled over and it, and it, and it fell over and I went, Oh no. And, uh, I remember they picked me or they actually told my, somebody told my parents that I'd broken my neck, but which was not at all true. They were just freaking out my parents, I think. But uh, I think some people did think it was my neck because I wasn't moving, but I couldn't move because my leg was broken. Um, but I remember Brody King was one that carried me all the way to the back, like around the whole building. He could because we couldn't get back through the entrance the way where we were because of my leg. And so he carried me all the way around the building, all the way to the back and put me on, walked me upstairs and put me on a couch real delicately and made sure I was good. And so was that, were your parents on that trip? Mm -mm. No. Cause I remember talking to your parents. I don't even know if you know this, but I, I like chatted with your parents about that right after it happened. Like, really? right after one of your parents reached out to me or or i was booked no i was booked on that cape championship wrestling show yeah and that but that was right after you got hurt i thought i think and i Mm. talked to your parents about it and or or it might have been through over facebook or something but I, i remember talking to your parents about it and going it's gonna be fine and like almost like trying to ease them but also me being wrestling dad in my yeah. own mind to you and going that son of a bitch. Like, yeah. Okay. So now you're on the shelf. Yeah. You're at the I, highest point you've ever been. Yeah. I Literally think- the highest point in wrestling and profession. Like you're the guy at that point on the Indies. What, uh, what does that do to the mindset and what is, what happens from that? Um, well, after I broke my leg, I was like, I thought I was going to be done, to be honest. Like, I was like, well, this is probably it for me, you know? And uh, done wrestling or yeah. done because you feel like, all right, I was hot. And very, we know how wrestling goes. When you're hot, it only lasts until the next GIF comes out there. Oh. No, it's more because of I didn't know if I would be able to get back to where I was. Okay. Like I didn't know that I would be able to wrestle again. And then I started going to rehab and stuff and I started progressing quicker than normal, honestly. Um, is what they told me at least. But they may tell that to everybody, so who knows? Um <laughs> I feel like they're never gonna tell you, hey, you're shitting the bed on recovery. Like it's not going like that. I feel like I feel like no therapy person or doctor is ever going to tell you that. Yeah, they uh, they they were telling me I was moving pretty fast, and uh, I remember getting a call from Cody again, and I I want to say it was late January or mid mid to late January, either that or very like the first week of February. Um. He called or he texts me, I'm sorry, and says, hey, are you going to be good for for double or nothing um, in Vegas? Um, and I said, I will be. I said, I absolutely will be. Don't you worry. Um, and Did you know you would be or was that a wrestler mindset of I'm going to make sure I am? I'm, that was me saying oh, if, I'm going to be ready right, right, regardless or not. And if regardless. not, I will fake it. Like no other. Exactly. Perfect. Yep. Beyond, we get to, we get down the road a little bit. It, we're like five months into recovery, four months to five months into recovery. Not long enough to be coming back to rest. Um, Joey Janela calls me and was like, hey, I'm out. Joey was out too because of the knee injury that yep. he got. <clears throat> and he was like, hey, I'm coming back at spring break. Would you like to, would you like to both return? and face each other at spring break. And I was like, yeah. He's like, are you going to be ready? I was like, yeah. And so, uh, so we do that match and it's a killer match. It is. Um, and then, uh, but I was not ready. 
I could barely, I couldn't run. I couldn't. So that I think that's the spring break I was at for your return against Joe. Yes. And I remember talking to you and you saying that, like, hey, like, I, I can move, but I'm not where I should be. Yeah, I wasn't at all. I was, I was probably 60%. Okay. To be honest, wrestling at 60%. Um, and uh, because I just wanted to wrestle. I, and it's a dumb decision. Whoever watching this, don't do that. Take your time, recover. Yeah, but, exactly. Um, because I still feel it today. God damn. But uh, so I come to double or nothing. I'm limping, like limping around Vegas. I can't. So you know where Caesar's Palace is? I we're staying in Caesar's Palace, and I go across the little bridge to cross the road that's like right next to Caesar's by Gordon Ramsay's restaurant, and I go across the bridge. And we go to this margarita bar and we're drinking a little bit and they want to go walking some more. And I said, I can't, I got to go back. And I had to go back just across the street because I couldn't walk anymore. And then we hit double or nothing. And man, there, I had to come down and hit the code breaker, which is fine. Like I can, I can bump and everything. I can do all that, but I just couldn't run very well. If you see my elimination, it's by Ace Romero when he does the pounce. Yep. Which, honest, I feel like that could have gone smoother as well. But it when we did it, you can see me. I'm kind of like fast speed walking into it. Not I'm not, I'm not running into it, and um, I wasn't ready. Uh, but once we got done. I said, well, I don't have to fake it anymore. And I just started limping around everybody. I didn't care. <laughs> um, uh, ah, ah, ah. You're not. Yeah. 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 You, it was over and done with. It's not like they can, re- they're going to erase it. Yep. And they were happy with the performance. Luckily, like, luckily I didn't have to do that much that time though. So had we, had it been all in or something, yeah, that would have been a different story. I wouldn't have been able to do all that, but. Do you feel that? Looking back, you would have still done it though. Oh yeah, hundred percent, right? Oh yeah. It, it, if you don't, you don't know if the opportunity is gonna ever be there again. Exactly. Okay. And, like, I I felt like I need. Here's the thing. Also, two years before this happened, I had this thing where I was just like, man, I feel like, I feel like this is for me. I feel like I'm gonna make it. I just okay. like. I guess it was. I guess that's what you would consider manifestation, but I didn't know anything about that or, and I really don't really now to be honest, but I just, I was like, Hey, I feel like I'm going to make it. I feel like I'm going to be all right. And then that happened. And I was like, Whoa, it worked out. But then that's kind of crazy because you said two years before that. And that was, I mean, two years before that you were just doing those local shows. You haven't, even had a taste of anything yet of yeah. kind of like the GCW stuff or any of that at that point. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's crazy that you put that in your mind and thought, you know what, it's going to happen. And then two years later it happened and it actually like blew up more than kind of out of nowhere. Yeah. In it, reality. Literally out of nowhere. And you know, one thing I, I do say as well that I've said to people is I almost feel like I didn't get a real run as a, as an independent wrestler. Um, like, okay. cause I'll like, be stuff for a while. And then I got like a year's worth of traveling and, well, maybe two years worth of traveling and experiencing other promotions. And then all of a sudden everything popped off and I was scooped up for AW right after I broke, right after I got done breaking my leg, um, they scooped me up and which I'm, not complaining at at all i think i learned more there than i ever would have in the past three that i've been with that i was with AEW. but so that's how i kind of i worked i started in 2006 no started in 2003 oh, okay. in wisconsin just little small town indie shows here and there i went to illinois four or five times minnesota once iowa once like not very much. It was, I was a twice a month guy. Yeah. And two and a half years later, <clears throat> it's thrown right into the fire with WWE. 
And so, like you said, it was never an indie run. I never, and, and I always said that kind of with WWE, like, or, and especially when I got released by WWE, I was like, man, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I didn't do the indies, so to speak. I literally worked the same companies twice a month. And that was my indie stuff before WWE. And I got, went off to the races for 10 years. And it's like, man, I don't know, especially going back to the indie scene that now you were on and killing it on. I didn't know what that was all about. And I sure wasn't going to fit in with what I was doing. So it's just, it was a very weird kind of, I always wished I had that indie run that the, the indie darlings talk about. And, but yet it's like, man, driving 10, 12 hours doesn't sound fun for 50 bucks. So I'm kind of glad I didn't have to do that. That's another, like it, it, it's, it's 50, 50 on that. Uh, so double or nothing happens. How long, when do, uh, when do you make it official? I was actually officially, my contract started August 1st of 2019. So uh, 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 right after double or nothing. A few, a few months after. Yeah. yeah. A couple of their shows um, without being signed. And then Matt Jackson, all of a sudden he goes, Oh yeah, we got to sign you. Don't we? <laughs> like, I guess they were planning on it anyways. Cause that's what Cody, Cody had kind of spilled the beans on that to me anyways. But Matt was, I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, you got to sign me. And so next, the next week, they had papers for me to sign and it was pretty cool. Um, but I signed the papers on my birthday. Oh, that's uh, awesome. My that's, that's crazy too. I did mine two days before my birthday. Did my you? WWE hundred percent. Two hey. years, two days before my WWE birthday or before my birthday, I signed my contract with WWE. That's crazy. You, you and WWE, you know, I told you I was going to bring my favorite action figures. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, here's my here's my all time favorite because, well, my favorite wrestler. But this is my all time oh, favorite. All right. Give me the story. Give me give me the story. Why oh, Big Paul? Bro, like, why, why was why was Big Paul your favorite of all time? This is um, a very very random favorite to have. Like okay. I, Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero. That that I could have been like, oh sweet, that makes sense. Big Paul? Yeah. Yeah. Big Paul. <laughs> <laughs> just, you just I, always loved him? Yeah. Him and like Kane and, and I liked big guys. I wanted to be, that's what I think. When I was younger and I was like, like a few inches shorter than I am now, but like a lot younger, uh, I thought, oh, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to be. I'm going to be real tall. I'm going to choke slam people and, sh and step over the top rope. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to be seven foot tall. No, it, it didn't work out, obviously. But I enjoyed, I loved watching Big Show because he had, a, he had great charisma, for one. He could get me invested. And he made me believe it as a, like a kid that he was really just like throwing these people up. Again, we talk about, we talked earlier how I really thought I knew a lot about you. Mind blowing right here. My yeah. <laughs> Big yeah. Paul being your favorite wrestler growing up is mind blowing to me. My favorite storyline is uh him and Brock in 2002, I, I believe. At, and I think yeah. the I like so much is it Unforgiven? Yep. Maybe. That's when nuts. <laughs> Where he had to like lift him up on the forklift. Yep. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. That, that's that's awesome. That's uh. So did you during your time? Then I gotta ask: Is there good you and and Big Paul stories? <sighs> Man, I wish there were more. Okay. I didn't, like I, we hung out, but not like we didn't hang out like outside of work at all. Okay. Really. Um. It was more of a we would talk and like joke around at work and stuff mostly i played cards with him he's a big card player yeah we, like, we, gin we would play gin a lot we had okay. we, and then overseas we would have gin tournaments and big show isn't a good loser 
<laughs> he at all, like at all, at all. He blames others. He blames this. And he, I, I saw him throw decks of cards just out of just anger, pissed off, lose it, lose the game, just throws the whole deck and walk, man. It was always one of those things where like, you really wanted to beat him for that reaction, but also you didn't want to beat him because you'd get that reaction. It yeah. was, he was, so I had the DX helmets, the, the army helmet and we were overseas on tour. And I, cause I was coming out with DX during the tour and he was just, he was, he was, he was in a grumpy mood. It was a long tour. He wasn't getting good sleep and he just sees the helmet and this is an army helmet. And he just, boom, his hand goes through this thick army helmet. And I go, show, I, I got to wear that the whole tour. Like the rest of the show. Oh, we have four or five more shows. I have to wear that. And he just walks out. And I was like, well, okay. He, we, I love him. He is, I always said, if he's, as long as he slept good and he's not hungry, he is the happiest person ever. Love him. <laughs> I, I, he's never, he, I never had uh, any issues with him. But... Uh, no, never. It, it was just like any of us, you know, we're, we're a few, a, a couple, a week or so into the tour and yeah. it's, it's, it's getting old. Daily life is getting old. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. What's the other one? I saw oh, green pants. I'm assuming oh, it's me. Yeah, it is you. Sorry, I didn't know you could see him. Hell yeah. That's uh so that's one of those things where that's the Mattel, and that's one of those things where when they when WWE moved from Jax to Mattel, I was like, man, I better get one. I, and then the first release that we had this huge talent meeting announcing Mattel and the new figures. And I'm looking at every figure. There's Shelton Benjamin, there's MVP, there's Matt Hardy, Kofi's there. Okay, he's my buddy. I'm happy for him. There's no little guy. And I'm not happy. I am not happy. I go, guys, I collect action figures. That's why I am where I am today because of action figures. And they go, oh, yeah, we just couldn't do uh, the runaround. The next reveal, I'm right there in the front. And I go, thank you. I tried all day to steal it literally off of the display. So I was like, I'm going to get the first one, whether it's a prototype or whatever. I'm going to get it. And they were watching me like a hawk because they knew what I was up to. They knew a hundred percent. I had my eye on it and I was going to try to take it. I'm kind of bummed. I never got one to be honest. I didn't understand why they didn't do the, do the three prep, the three prep, the three pack. It's, <sighs> it is what it is. I'm not like, no, it's, that was, that was one of the surprising ones to me too, of, of the reveals of that time of like i was like oh they're gonna do both of them and then they're gonna do the the double pack they could have easily done even as the ringside exclusive but things happen for a reason as we know it is what it is uh jericho cruise yes i see videos of you on the jericho cruise this is where i now know and find out you're a god dang musician as well (laughs) was this always a thing uh yeah. In your life, like how did music, music has always been a part of your life. Kinda, yeah. Um, I remember when I was in like fifth, fourth or fifth grade, I got my first guitar, but I didn't okay. actually play it. It was a little, it was like a mini, uh, electric guitar, and uh, I think it was a Squire, is what it was called. But uh, I never played. I just strummed it real loud on my amp and stuff and uh i didn't actually learn how to play guitar until eighth grade uh when we moved back actually when we moved back um i when they had a music class that was teaching i wanted to learn drums and they had mentioned drums but they didn't have actual drums they had bongos and i was real bummed but do your parents um, are your parents musically inclined my mom sings. My dad can sing. Uh, my mom, none of them play guitar. My dad actually does play guitar. He does. I don't know why that slipped my mind. Yes, he does. He's, he, I believe I have surpassed him a little bit. 
in it now, but, and I don't say that with like, uh, in a bad way, but like, he just doesn't like, he was never like a player player. He was a casual, like I can, I strum these chords yep. and like, and he, he did some casual like songwriting. A couple of them are pretty good, but. So um, after seeing the Jericho stuff and you did, you also did a, like a, a one man, you did a, like a concert during, was that during Starcast or what was that during? That was, uh, that was for GCW. That was actually this past year, last That's year. That's what it was. That's what it was. And so I was like, man, he's singing that. I think you did a dashboard song. No, Ryan Cabrera. Yeah. What? I did. It was an emo show or an emo thing. I did. I did a never shout never song. I did. What was my, what was the other one? I can't, I can't, I can't, I don't know. And then I did Stacy's mom. That's, that's what it was. Okay. So I see that and I go, man, I, I need to be part of this. I think we do a stand up show in the evening with the little guys where I do my somewhat stand up show and you play me off with your awesome concert and then we just sing like ryan cabrera and boy band songs to end the show so i this is still on my docket and needs to happen at some point in some in some probably after a gcw show at some time yes. where it's it's we need to make this happen uh yeah. uh and it's and we could say it's a one-man show because the two of us make one <laughs> that's that's all it is and so it's still going to be a one-man show with two people um so you're doing music you're traveling what else what else is going on now now um, now. well i'm not i'm not employed anymore uh um no, i'm just playing I no, that makes, that makes, let's be honest that makes two of us <laughs> <laughs> um no i uh i'm i'm actually working with a company in missouri um helping do some stuff there called cape championship wrestling we actually are moving from the cape name though and just going to be ccw um due to some issues there that it's fine but uh um you've been there before i um, have and they were awesome i it was so much fun and again being around your parents <laughs> was the best i i adore your family your family are the absolute greatest nicest most heartwarming people i've ever been around love they appreciate hearing that for sure yes man yeah i love my parents they they did good by me my whole life so i can't complain at all uh but yeah i i was i'm working for ccw up there um and uh we're actually starting a training school up there that i'm going to be a part of which is going to be cool um it's kind of crazy to me i don't uh, I'm because a lot of times in my head, I'm like, what am I going to be able to teach somebody? But uh, I, then I actually get in there and I'm like, well, I, I guess I, I can teach a little bit. And but, also you, you realize how much you weren't taught. Yes. And then you can go and like, I wasn't taught this. So I need to make sure to teach them this mm -hmm. to make sure that they, they don't miss out on things. Yeah. 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 hundred yeah. percent. But we're doing that training school there. And actually, um, I, uh, I'm going to be a promoter, booker now. Um, oh, booker guy. Booker man. Okay. You're in Memphis, Tennessee. Good old Memphis, Tennessee. We're going to. Are you in? So this is another place you've now moved is Memphis? Memphis? No, I live in Mississippi. Technically. Okay. I live in Mississippi. But it is. I can almost touch the, if I spit, I can probably make it to Tennessee from here. Basically is, is how close I am to the, Man, to Memphis. The, all that stuff runs together. Yeah. It's, it's insane. I fly out of Memphis. It's the airport's 10 minutes away from me. Um, okay. The ven venue itself is probably 25 minutes away from me. So it's nice. Um, but right. we got you, we got a venue for our Memphis, for the Memphis show. Um, it's going to be called uh, CCW South. As of right now, um, awesome. 
And, uh, you know, how, how would you like, would you like to be a part of that? September 17th. Let me look. Our first official show day. September 17th, I am currently open. And September 17th, I am now writing Marco Stunt on my thing. Yes! Hell yeah. Hell yeah, we got it. Uh, yeah, so September 17th, got our first. Let's do it. September CCW South, September 17th. I'm pumped. I haven't been in that area much independently. Mm. And I really, like, I love it. So this is going to be fun. It's going to be really, really fun. Well, I'll, I'll, if you don't have a show the day before, I'll get you in a day. I've a seen bit. Luke Combs the day before. Really? So I cannot promise you how awake I will be when I land. But I'll be there for the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's all good. Awesome, uh, man. Good, good, uh, good reasoning. To not awesome. Line. Yeah. Well, we're going to have fun. Marco? That's going to do it. It's small talk. Uh, I've learned even more about you and about the, the person you are. And it's been awesome learning that and learning more about you. Uh, like I've said to you so many times, you are, even though you're 10 years younger than me, you are like a, an inspiration to me. And that's a real, that's a real thing is you're, you're legitimately an inspiration because you small town, Mississippi made it and showed like, Hey, you are DIY. And in this day and age in wrestling, you have to be DIY. You have to. And you proved every bit of that. You made it on your own. You built your own brand. And then out of nowhere, you blew up so much, you went to the, 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 one of the biggest wrestling companies on the planet, out of a small town, in uh, literally from nothing to here. Yeah. And that's, you, you absolutely inspired me, everything you've done, and I'm so glad I could have watched it from the start. And it was so awesome to, after we worked, to then become buddies and check in with you. And just watch you have fun. Yeah, I'm very, very happy about that. So thank, thank you. you. Appreciate you. I'm very glad that we have the relationship we do now. It's meant a lot. I never thought that that would be a thing. And now. Because you're 10 years younger than me. And when I was on television, you were still in diapers, essentially. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, man, plug your stuff. What do you got? Plug it. Oh, yes, I do have a pro wrestling tease. See, you're pro fired now. You got to get better at this. I know. God, I have <laughs> tease slash Marco stunt. Um, I have quite a few of my T-shirts up there. I need to put my newest one up there, actually. Um, it's a pretty cool one. But uh, most of my T-shirts are up there. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Real Marco Stunt. And, uh, yeah, go follow CCW Wrestling as well. Go find us on Twitter. Um, I don't know the exact at. Not I'm going good. to be on Marco to release his own music publicly as well. Because the world needs to hear it. Kind of work. He, he needs to do it. He absolutely needs to do it because I will. I just got my son is teaching me how to use Spotify. Oh, yeah. For the first time. I don't <laughs> like it. I don't like it at all. So I'm going to I will Spotify that when it happens, but it needs to happen. Guys. Thank you so very, very much for checking out another small talk. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, smash the bell. Check us out. Thank you, Marco. We'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.